Hi, it's time for another math easy solution uh, term to discuss further into parametric equations and now go over example 9 of the example series and look further at the cycloid curve and go over part 3 of the proof series. So make sure to watch my earlier videos part 1 and 2 to learn more about the cycloid. So um, moving forward, uh, let's look at the example. It says that given that from my earlier videos I proved the parametric equations for the cases case 1 where theta or the angles between 0 and pi over 2 in case 2 where theta is between pi over 2 and pi show that in fact the parametric equations are valid for all values of theta and then we have uh, the, and again these are the equations, the parametric equations that I proved for these cases where it's x equals to r times theta minus sine theta and y equals r times 1 minus cos theta so the first steps we can do is let's look at now case 3 where we have theta is equal to 0. So these ones recall I, I proved for in between 0 and pi over 2 and in between pi over 2 and pi. Let's look at when theta is equal to 0. In case 4 I'll look at theta is equal to um, pi over 2 and in case 5 it, when it equals to pi. So let's look at this if we were to draw the x and y axis like this and then just draw a circle because recall a cycloid is just a, a, a rolling circle that uh, you would trace the point on its circumference. So in this case, the point initially is equal to, this is P, and the point is at 0, 0, 0x, zero, zero, like that. And now at this uh, initial point, theta is equal to 0, because this is the angle, so the ball hasn't rolled, so this angle is just uh, a line, or this line from here to the P point is just, well, the angle is 0, it hasn't rotated. And again, the uh, radius of this is r. So we assume radius is r like that. So we can prove that, in fact, this, these equations work by, well, initially we have x equals to 0, which is the same thing as if we plug in these equations. We have r, and then we have theta is equal to 0 minus sine 0, where sine 0 is just, well, uh, 0. So recall it's just 0, so then we have 0 times r, which just equals to 0. So then we've proved for this case, now for y, y is equal to 0. If we plug in this equation, we have r 1 minus cos 0, where this is equal to 1. So cos 1 is, is equal, yeah, so cos 0 is 1, so we have 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 times r is just 0. So we've proven this case. So that's a check mark. That, that was the easy one. Yeah, so now if we look at the next case where we have uh, case 4. So case 4 is when we allow uh, theta, or the angle, equals to pi over 2. Because again, so we have 0 in between 0 and pi over 2, and then pi over 2 and 0, I mean, and then pi. So we go from, we just check pi over 2 case, and then the next one's pi. So what we end up having is, or what this means, is if we have the x and y axis like this, x, y, and now if we draw the curve trace, it looks something like that. And then let's say at this point, this is when we have a right angle, or the, that's how long the ball has traveled. And this theta is equal to pi over 2, where is this angle like that. And then if we draw our circle, it looks something like this. Draw it a bit neater. Yeah, so this isn't too neat, but yeah, so just assume that's a circle, and then the radius is r and r. So this is after the ball has rolled, or the circle has rolled, um, this total distance, which is going to be the same as this arc length, actually. So recall that this is the same thing. This is a equals 2 arc length. Oh, let's write r, r theta. So the arc length across from here to here is just r theta by definition. Again, you can see my earlier proofs, part 1 and 2, to learn more about that. And then, so that this is the amount of distance it travels across here, so r theta. Where this r theta, because it's pi over 2, so we have r pi over 2. And then this point here is p on the curve, and now if we draw the x uh, coordinate, we have it over there, and then the y is over here. So it looks uh, from here we can determine the values of x. So x is simply equal to this total distance subtracted by this r. So we have, now what we have is r pi over 2 minus r. And then we can factor out the r, this is just r pi over 2 minus 1. And now we can test if this is in fact uh, the same as the equation where it's 
Oh, x equals to r theta minus sine theta. So we could test that out. So this is r, uh, and then this is going to be theta, which is pi over 2 minus sine pi over 2. And recall that this is just equal to 1. So then this just equals to r theta minus, uh, yeah, theta over 2 minus 1. So we've just proven the x coordinate is correct. So now the next thing to do is check the y. So y is simply equal to, as you can see from this figure, y is just equal to r. So it's just the radius. So it equals to r. So now if we test this out by checking with the formula we derived earlier, so this, is, this must be 1 minus cosine. Now we have the angle pi over 2. And now what this is, pi over 2 recall is just, well, 0. This goes to 0. So then this just equals to r. So 1 minus 0 is 0. So yeah, we just have, we've just proved it for this case. So now the next case is theta is equal to pi. So case 5, theta equals to pi. So if we draw the x and y uh, coordinates again, and now if we draw this across, yeah, if we draw this all the way across to here, so that the highest point is actually when we have, uh, when theta is equal to pi. So we have p, the point here, and then this, draw this all the way down, we have this, if the center of the circle is here. This, this full angle is uh, pi over 2, so, or theta is equal to, I mean just pi, so theta is equal to pi, not pi over 2. And now if we draw this around, just draw a circle like this, it's not, doesn't look like a circle, but yeah, assume it's a circle. So we have that, and again, recall the arc length fully here. Yeah, it's just r theta, which is just r times pi. So then this case here, the full distance across is going to be r theta equals to r pi. And now the distance here is r, this is r as well, the radius like that. So we have an x coordinate here, and then all the way across we have a y, which is just aligns itself all the way with this point. So what this means is that x is equal to r pi, or pi times r, just because that's the total distance across here. And now if we just plug this in with our equation, so r times, and this is a theta, which is pi minus sine pi, what we end up here is, recall that this is just, well, zero. So sine pi is just zero, so then we have r pi. So this is correct. And now the next one is y is equal to r times, I know mean, this is just, well, 2r. Well, you can see y is just 2 times r. So this is just 2r. And now this equals to, if we plug into the our other equation, this must equal each other, so we have r 1 minus cosine and then pi. And now if you recall cosine pi, that's just actually, uh, this goes to negative 1. And yeah, just recall that, so it's negative 1, so we have 1 minus negative 1, which is plus, so we have 2, so 1 plus 1 is just 2r. So we've concluded that, yeah, this is the correct for this case as well. So now, or now well, let's just first summarize, so thus, we have proved, so thus we have proved for, for uh, the angle is between, uh, between, well, theta is between 0 and pi, including those points. So if we draw the circle, this means that the angle we've got is uh, for basically the full length across. So we've proven it when the ball rolls half of the circumference like that. Uh, this is the angles that we've proven for those equations. But what we should notice is that, well, basically, if we look at the, uh, for values greater than it, so if theta is greater than pi, yeah, or even uh, less than, or theta is less than zero, so we have for if basically on the negative side, the yeah, negative side would be the same as well. What we'll notice is, well, if we just draw this out, let's draw this x across like this and y. Now, if we draw the shape traced out, let's go a full interval like that, and then it goes back again. So it basically repeats itself. So now what we'll do is, let's say we have an, a point here where the circle is going to be, well, it's half that distance, so it's somewhere, let's say the circle somewhere here. 
and then we have an angle like this or a circle like that and then we have this angle which is just our uh, a pi, I mean our theta, so we have point P here so let's say we have a value like that but then let's compare it with if the point went all the way to well exactly where this is and it's all the way to this point and we'll saw, say we have a point P like that it's just a different point just to show you how it would look like so we have an angle like this or just a shape like this where the this, this aligns it as well this is the point let's say it's somewhere here let's try to be symmetrical and then we draw a circle like that this is a bad circle okay so we have a circle like that or just one more try yeah, so let's just draw it like that, and now we have the angle across here. So assume these are the exact same angles, but now we have, so this angle is, is greater than uh, pi. This is one we've already proven. Now we, let's say the angle uh, is theta like that. And then what we notice is, well, this difference here is just going to be 2 pi minus theta. And as you can see, this is in fact just mirror images of it. And you can actually prove it for this angle will be the exact same thing as for this one. You're just dealing with 2 pi minus theta and also the nature of uh, trigonomic functions. So these are just mirror images. So then it's just a pattern that just keeps repeating and repeating itself. And in fact, this pattern repeats well for all values of uh, all values of theta. This pattern just repeats repeats itself for all right for theta is an element of all real numbers or basically every kind, every value even if you go negative even if you go to the other side on the left side it'd be the same exact thing and in fact you could see this when you graph the equations out so let's say we have yeah, we, we graph out y and instead of x, we graph out theta. Just, let's just show you the independent function. So we have theta like that. And let's say we have y and we want to graph out sine and cosine. Yeah, so if we graph out the sine curve, the sine curve looks something like this. Let's draw it for double, uh, for basically two cycles. If this is going to be equal to uh, sine of theta, yeah, like that sine theta and let's say at the exact halfway mark we have it across here will be where we start to repeat itself and this is at 4 pi this value here is well 2 pi so now if we graph out the cosine in red let's draw it something like this so it it's it uh, is a max here and then it goes to a zero here max whenever sine is zero it goes to a maximum like this and then it goes to zero right here, maximum here, zero, maximum just to trace it a bit better, and then max there. So let's just follow along this, like that, and then like that, and going there. Yeah, so what we notice is, well, at this point here, so at theta is equal to 2 pi, what this means is that, well, 2 pi minus uh, theta, this just equals to zero. And as you can see, notice that these are the exact same curves, or they're, they're exactly aligned. So from here to here, this is just, well, the cycle repeats. Cycle repeats. And as you can see, 2 pi minus uh, now theta, when theta is equal to 2 pi, is equal to 0. So notice here is just a mirror image. This 2 pi minus theta, we basically start over where we started. So if we started here, we ended up, and then, then basically the cycle repeats but we're on to this side. So, and sine and theta are pretty much only things changing. I mean, sine, cosine, theta are the only things changing in the parametric equations. So basically, it's just a pattern with the trig function. Then going over again, it's gonna be the exact same thing. Due to the nature of trigonomic functions, it just the cycle goes back up and down all the time. So anyways, that's all for today. I just wanted to go into this in more depth just for completeness sake to show you that these parametric equations work for all values of theta. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learn and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.